Welcome to the Center for Reproductive Medicine pre-op presentation. Our physicians are committed to preserving your fertility. You and your physician have decided that the best course of treatment for you is surgery. Our physicians work very hard to correct any problems that they may feel that interferes with your ability to conceive or to help you alleviate your pain from endometriosis. This presentation is designed to educate and inform you about your upcoming surgery. Please be aware that your surgery may include more or less than what is, will be covered in this general overview. Your physician will discuss your specific case with you after this presentation. A diagnostic laparoscopy visualizes the abdominal contents with a laparoscope, which is a telescopic-like instrument with a light inserted on the end. It is inserted through a half-inch incision through the navel. A second instrument is usually introduced through a puncture at the pubic hairline. A hysteroscopy is a procedure where an instrument is inserted into the cervical canal to allow the physician to look at and correct any abnormalities inside of your uterus. A dilatation and curettage is a DNC. This is a procedure to remove the excess tissue from inside your uterus. Your physician uses small instruments to open or dilate your cervix, which is the lower narrow part of your uterus. He then uses a surgical instrument called a curette to remove the excess uterine tissue. Lysis of adhesions and removal of endometriosis. Lysis of adhesions is a surgical procedure where the physician will cut away to separate the scar tissue from your organs. Excision of endometriosis will remove the endometrial implants by cutting them away from the surrounding tissue with scissors, a very fine heat gun, or even a laser. These procedures are done while you're under anesthesia along with or in conjunction with a laparoscopy. A salpingectomy is the removal of a fallopian tube. Fallopian tubes may contain an accumulation of fluid that can be toxic to an embryo. It can also be diseased and create an environment for an ectopic pregnancy. Our physicians are very fertility sparing and would never take your tube unless it was deemed to be a hindrance to your future fertility. By this point, you and your physician have discussed the removal of this tube. Your physician will come in later to answer any questions about this procedure if you're still unsure about this part of your surgery. The goal of any surgical procedure is to correct any problem areas while you're under anesthesia. Our physicians have the same goal of preserving and protecting your fertility for the future. What should I expect to happen today? You will see your physician today to answer any questions that are specific to your case, which may or may not be covered in this presentation. What should I expect to do after I leave the office? You'll need to go to the Mobile Infirmary Medical Registration Office after your appointment today for your pre-op testing for blood work. You should not have any alcohol 24 hours prior to surgery. This includes beer, wine, or any mixed drinks. You should shower with an antibacterial soap the day before surgery. Just make sure that your navel is clean. The day before surgery, we encourage you to eat a light supper the night before your procedure, soups and salads. Remove all fingernail and toenail polish. Clear nail polish on acrylic nails is acceptable. The day of surgery, you will arrive at the Mobile Infirmary Medical Center two hours prior to your surgery. It's important that you not drink or eat anything after 12 midnight the morning of your surgery. This means no water, no gum, no candy, or any mints. You can brush your teeth, but just don't swallow any of the water. Don't take any morning medications the day of your surgery unless instructed to by the physician. Talk to a nurse at your pre-op if you are on blood pressure medications. Don't bring any valuables with you to the hospital. Any removable teeth or dentures must be taken out prior to surgery. The day of your surgery, you should wear loose-fitting clothes to the hospital. You should not wear makeup, no contact lenses, no nail polish or jewelry. Please remove all body piercings.
Your family will be instructed to sit in the atrium waiting area of the hospital during your surgery. Someone from your family must be present throughout the surgery. Your physician will come out and speak to your family after the surgery. He will give your family a brief overview of your condition at that time. The day of surgery, you must have someone to drive you home from the hospital. The evening of the surgery, you should rest. You should take it as easy as possible the day after your surgery as well. It's easy to overdo it. There are no restrictions the day after your surgery, but you should limit your activity for the first 48 hours after surgery. After surgery, you should avoid intercourse for at least one week. It's normal to experience cramping or bleeding after surgery. Report blood clots that are golf ball sized or larger, bleeding that saturates a pad over the course of an hour, or report a fever greater than 101. Anything unusual or that you feel like is wrong, give us a call. Your physician has given you a prescription for nausea just in case you don't do well after the anesthesia. Anesthesia effects can last for several days in some patients. Call us if you're having unresolved nausea or vomiting. Common complaints after surgery are body pain, headaches, or even a sore throat from the breathing tube. Your next menstrual period can come sooner or later than what's expected. Your period can be heavier than normal or even lighter than what is normal for you. Call your nurse with any questions you might have. You can resume your regular diet after surgery. Dry foods and liquids are best if you're nauseated. Use stool softeners such as docalox for relief. Colace and mild laxatives can help with constipation caused by your pain medications. The day after surgery, remove the outside bandage covering your incision. Stair strips need to be left on until they fall off. This can take up to 10 days. Sutures will be removed if not dissolved by the post-op appointment in two weeks. Gently clean over the top of your incision twice a day with hydrogen peroxide and a cotton swab, gauze, or even cotton balls. Keep the incisions clean and dry. We will give you a prescription for your pain medication today. Pick up your pain medication before your surgery, but don't take it prior to your procedure. It's advised to bring it with you to the hospital if you're from out of town. Leave it with a trusted family member. If you have a reaction to the medication, stop the medication and please call us at area code 251-438-4200. Our physicians are on call for emergencies. Don't use any aspirin-containing products for three days following the surgery. Use Advil on the leave for pain control in between your pain medication. It's common to have pain in your shoulders for the first 48 hours after surgery. If you have this type of pain, lie down until the pain subsides. Take something for pain. Avoid gas-forming foods. Stay away from carbonation if you have this type of shoulder pain. One study has shown that chewing gum after surgery can help prevent this type of pain. After your surgery, avoid tub baths for at least two weeks. This means no swimming or jacuzzis for the next two weeks as well. Showers can be taken the day following surgery. When will I find out the results of my surgery? Your physician will give your family a brief overview of your well-being after the surgery. You'll get the results of your surgery findings at your post-op appointment. This post-op appointment should be made by your nurse today before leaving our office. It should be approximately two weeks after your surgery. You'll be able to see your surgery pictures at this time and be able to discuss your future treatment plan with your physician based on the outcome of your surgery. In summary, you should have nothing to eat or drink after midnight the day of your surgery. No alcohol 24 hours prior to surgery. Make sure that you have a driver the day of your surgery. Clean your incision the day after
after you get home from surgery and make your post-op appointment today before you leave our office. The pre-op presentation is now complete. Let your nurse know that you're finished with your pre-op portion of your visit. The physician will be in shortly to help you answer any questions that are specific to your case. Make sure that you pick up your prescription once the physician has signed them. And from all the nurses here at the Center for Reproductive Medicine, we wish you the best of luck.